Hey, I'm Blythe Stevens. I'm an MFA that uses they, she pronouns and the creator of A Blythe Coach, where I help multi-passionate creatives dance through their difficulties and take leaps of faith. I realized lately that there's a few books and resources that have had a really lasting impact. There's more than a few, of course, but I was thinking nostalgically back to a particular time in my development when I had left home to attend performing arts conservatory. I was studying ballet really intensively, meeting new people from all over the country and getting lots of artistic influences, but also having really a lot of intellectual curiosity. And one treat that we would get to participate in from time to time as students, high school students living in the dorms is we'd get to go to the mall. <laughs> and a friend of mine in particular would take us to the Barnes & Noble bookstore um, at that time, and we would get to go buy books. It's really a treat that lasts in my memory as um, a really special time that we got to have together as friends, those of us who were sort of a little bit more nerdy and academic and curious, interested in buying some books. And so I thought I would just share with you what are the books that I still have from that, those Barnes and Noble trips way back then and how they are influencing me now, how they've influenced me since then. So here's my little stack of books I bought back then, back in high school. The first of which is the art book. So this was actually, I was inspired to purchase this because classmates of mine already had it. Actually, a lot of things that I did back then, I was in, a, in the ballet program, I was majoring in ballet, but I had friends who were in the visual arts and music and theater and drama and design and production, filmmaking, all. <laughs> all modalities. And in particular, the modern dancers did a lot of composition, choreography, improvisation. And so they had lots of different points of inspiration. And one of the things that they um, had as a material to inspire them was this art book. So it's just um, a fight on art book. It's it's interesting. It's arranged by alphabetically by last name of the artist. So it's it's kind of an interesting range of different artistic styles and time periods, and um, an amazingly inspiring resource to have. I know there's a larger format version as well. This is the smaller one that's more portable, full color, gorgeous, and. Um, Something fun that I've done in the intervening years with this book is I was so excited and so inspired by these pieces. It actually has listed um, in the back some different museums and galleries and where, where these pieces can be found. And so as I was actually able to travel in college and then as an adult, um, I've been checking off when I'm able to visit one of the museums that hosts some of these pieces, I'm able to actually then say which ones I have seen and where. And so in Spain, in France, in Italy, and upcoming, who knows where, um, able to actually track where some of my favorite pieces are and when I have seen them in person. And it continues to be a really special resource for me and also a great reference to, to open up, peek into, and create dances or other artworks or writing. So especially for creatives, I definitely recommend having such a resource as this. And I'm super glad I was also influenced by those modern dance and contemporary teachers and techniques. At that time, I did also start a, a dance notebook and kept records of my feedback and uh, corrections during class, choreography notes, either things that we were learning or things I was creating. And actually, that's one of the the tragic losses in terms of possessions of my life is that I no longer have that book. I don't know what happened to it in one of my many moves that um, wandered off, and sadly, I don't have any more, but I do still have the art book and immortal poems of the English language. So I did also buy myself a poetry anthology at that time. I've loved poetry ever since I was a little kid, and I have some Edward Lear and some other things like that, but this was my first sort of more comprehensive 
poetry collection of yeah, all the major poets of the English language. And this similar, it's sort of analogous to the, the visual art book is sort of that for poetry and the written word. And so a great point of inspiration for creating and, and for life. Definitely just such a good one. It's crazy how old these books now look. How did that happen? So number three is Natalie Goldberg's Writing Down the Bones, a little teeny weeny eeny one. So I had already, I already did have Natalie Goldberg's Wild Mind in my collection from my dad, but this one came out in this cute little itty edition. And uh, there's just something about reading about writing and the writing process that I do find inspiring for my writing, but also for any creative pursuit. I find that the the advice and the exercises for creating ideas and, and uh, the lifestyle that supports us as creative people is sort of similar, whether you're a writer or a painter or a dancer or a musician or whatever the case may be. So yeah, I love writing down the bones as well. And then finally, on a more esoteric note, at that time, I had bought my first set complete set of tarot cards with instructions this is based on the classic writer weight and yeah these were up until recently these were the tarot cards that i had i didn't really learn how to use them right away but i did sort of play with them a little bit back then got more into it actually while i was living in portland a friend of mine provided a few intuitive tarot readings for me when I was going through my first divorce and having a really difficult and dark time in life and those insights were so 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 valuable to me and I was able to understand better how um, at least in in their way of working which is also my way of working now it's not so much that we hold the process of reading tarot cards in some way to predict the future or to, to tell our fortune, although that's fine if that's how you do it, but instead it's more of a psychological tool where we're tapping into our own ways of knowing our intuition and um, yeah, sort of creatively interpreting all the signs that we see around us to gather information and to make decisions and to yeah, move powerfully forward. So yeah, I've got a little visual arts, a little poetry, a little bit of how to write, as well as some creative and intuitive inspiration that have continued to lead me and support my work even decades later. So I'm deeply thankful to Feeney Holcomb, who was one of the major drivers or inspirations for, for those long ago bookstore visits. And, for the influences that I had that time that pointed me in the directions of continuing to feed my intellect and curiosity and creativity, continue to educate myself, eventually, of course, to continue on to higher education. And um, yeah, I just thought that was really wild that I've still got these books or these resources in my collection and that even now, those have been powerfully inspiring and motivating influences in my life. So I'm curious for you, what is a book or a resource that you acquired back then that continues to be a powerful influence to you this, to this day? Or you can really recognize that it was a life-saving or life-changing book for you. I'd be so interested to know in the comments below. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed taking a little peek into, into my reading history, book buying history. And I'll see you again next time.